Look at this, dude. All right, so in motion V13 Challenger, guys. This wheel is, I think, going to be the best electric unicycle ever made right here, hands down. And why do I say that? Because I think in motion is about to take over the electric unicycle game completely. And I know the master's coming out. I know all this. I know yada yada. I think, I think the in motion is going to be going to be the deal breaker, guys. This thing is going to be the bee's knees. So, anyways, check it out. This is the new video they released on the in motion V13 Challenger. It's going to be coming out. It's going to have. The roll cage on here, like you see, this awesome new design, guys. I don't know, but I love the look of this wheel, straight up. I just, I love the way it looks, guys. It looks good. It seriously does. The fender on it, the roll cage, the color. I love the orange color on it, dude. I've, like, for some reason with all my wheels, I've, like, put KTM stickers on it, done the orange theme on it. I love it, guys. And this wheel is just decked out in orange as it comes. This thing is sweet, dude. So, it's gonna be slim. What are you saying right here? It's, it's gonna be a slim wheel, like the InMotion V12, like I really like. I like the slimmer profile, because it's not like the Beagle EXN. I also like the EXN for my long rides and stuff. But with the EXN, you can't really twist on it and spin on it and maneuver it as fast. With the V12, you can really, it's so maneuverable, dude. You can spin on that thing real fast and maneuver it back and forth, just because it's thin, so you can, flare it around real easy and when you get in the air you can uh, like do tail whips and little you know twist with it and all that type of stuff i love that about the the smaller uh form factor of the v12s now with the v13 we're going to be seeing that dude and just the power pad setup on this thing check it out dude it looks like it's just going to be extremely comfortable and well set up um uh, as is it doesn't look like there's any adjustments on here or anything but it does look like this is going to be great. Uh, it looks like you'll be able to remove these. And it looks like the side panel on here would be perfect uh, to be able to, you know, uh, put on aftermarket pads if you wanted to take these off. But I really like these. I think these are going to work out well. I think they look like they're set up in a great spot. Um, I think they look like they're going to work for like 90% of the riders out there. Straight up, dude, with the stock pads. It got adjustable pedals on here. So what does that mean? It means, like... You're gonna be able to adjust these pedals if you want them up higher, if you want them down lower. So for the lower pedals on the V12, guys, it's easier to learn with. If you have them in the lower position, your center of gravity is a little bit lower and it just makes the ride a little bit more stable, arguably. Some people think, you know, it doesn't really matter, but I'd say 80% of the people kind of feel like if you have lower pedals, your center of gravity is gonna be lower, it's gonna be easier to learn, easier to ride. The one drawback to having low pedals is if you're trail riding you'll hit rocks and stuff like that so the big benefit of having these adjustable pedals is being able to pull them up a little bit and then when you're trail riding and stuff uh, you got more pedal clearance for rocks coming and also you can corner way sharper which is why I like this for like even racing because you can you, once those pedals are up higher you can dive into your corners more before you get pedal scrapes which is so cool about the in motion v12 and as well as this i'm so glad they're going to keep these pedals that you can raise up now this is also cool on this wheel check this out i know i'm kind of skipping around here but so with the way the roll cage is set up guys it's not like the sherman roll cage on here where the whole roll cage goes around the whole wheel I think they thought this one through, honestly, a little bit better. And I kind of like this one a little bit better after looking at it. So you got the, a solid roll cage on here, which is probably, I mean, with in motion design, guys, this thing's going to be solid. It's not going to be going anywhere. Uh, you can see right here, it comes up high enough to where it's going to protect that screen in case of any impact on the front. If it flips over even and lands on the top of this thing, your screen's not going to get hit. That roll cage is in a great spot. You can see that right there. That roll cage is in the perfect spot. It really is, guys. Another thing to check out. On the back back here, or let's look at uh, the rest of the, what the roll cage protects. The roll cage protects the headlight. It also protects the charge ports back here as well from any damage. I mean, you could really have a high-speed crash on this wheel, and all your main components are going to be protected. Your headlight, your screen, 
uh, your charge port, everything like that. And then guys, check this out. So you see this little area right here, this a little bit darker. And then right, well, you don't see it on the prototype right here because this is probably a prototype wheel. But what they're gonna be doing on the final product is they're gonna have uh, like skid plates. Check this out. Uh, where are they at? Where does it show these things? I don't know if I can find it in all this video. But basically, these things right here are reinforced metal bits on, on this part, on this part, and vice versa on the other side. The video shows it coming up. I don't know exactly where, so I'll just explain it. Uh, but these basically, instead of making the whole cage out of metal, instead of making the uh, roll cage go all the way down here, kind of like that Sherman did, the one drawback to having that roll cage go all the way down low is it hinders you from going up curbs and it also puts this obstacle in front right here to where you don't have as much clearance going over things and now if you look at a lot of people's veteran shermans or their sherman maxes that roll cage that comes on the bottom is going to be dented or scratched up from going over curbs from hitting rocks from various things like that and you can see they fought this through and got that out of the way and they just put reinforced metal plates right here so in the event this thing does crash, it's going to skid on these metal plates instead of on the plastic shell. And then there's also no need to add the whole extra weight of that full roll bar, which I think is very, very well thought through. Now, this thing is also going to have, so check this out. So this is how the whole thing goes together. Right here, pretty cool diagram. I like the trolley handle. The trolley handle looks like it's going to be great. The batteries are going to be filled with this unique type of resin uh, in the packs. This is going to be like a crash resistant resin, if that makes sense. So the batteries are going to be encased in their plastic shell. But that shell is going to be filled with a resin that keeps them protected. In the case of an event of, uh, of you crash or anything like that, your packs are going to be well protected on this wheel, guys. And they thought this through, which is, I mean, to see in motion doing this, man, they're going to sweep the game. Like, I understand, like, the mat, look, so this is the part where, check this out. This is where they're filling the, like, the, the plastic encasements for the batteries with resin right here. There's just a diagram showing how they do it. But you can understand that. Like, if you have just a battery pack, you throw it against the wall. It's going to tear it up. If you have it in plastic, you throw it against the wall, it'll be a little bit better. But if you have it in plastic and then gel encasing those battery cells inside that plastic and throw it against the wall, then nothing's going to happen to it. It's going to be well protected. And so they thought about that, and that's what they're doing with these batteries, which is great. They got two hull sensors in it, which basically means um, if you crash on this wheel, guys, or not if you crash, not if you crash. Uh, the hall sensor basically means, um, in all these wheels, guys, if you look at like the hub motor of an electric bicycle or you look at like the hub motor of an electric unicycle, the one difference you'll find in there is a hall sensor. And a hall sensor basically is what keeps these electric unicycles upright. That's not the hall sensor, that's the motherboard. But the hall sensor is just like a little white little, little sensor in there. And it just, basically all of them have it. It is not something that would fail a lot. But they went ahead with this wheel and put two of them in there. In case it ever did fail, it's redundant and like an airplane. So if something goes wrong in an airplane, usually you get two of them. Same with this wheel. Something goes wrong. Uh, your hall sensor, which is one of those things that keeps you upright <laughs> going down the road, um, they, it's a fail safe in there, which is there's two of them, which you're never going to have a problem with two of them going bad at the same time. So you're going to be good to go on this wheel, guys. It says compact, clean uh, cable management on this thing. One thing with the V12 I did notice, guys, was the cable management was just kind of brutal um, when you take this whole thing apart. So they worked that out and did better on it, apparently. This is your suspension mechanism right here. It looks similar to the V11 mechanism, guys, but it is different and it is better. Um, two sets of independent dampeners on each side. So you can adjust the pressure and the dampening according to your weight and riding preference. 
super responsive to uneven terrain, it says. This video is kind of hard to navigate, guys. Right? You can take the suspension system out of it, apparently. So you can literally fully remove the suspension system, as you saw right there. Uh, so this is... So that's the suspension system, and then here, let me find the part where it's... Hold on. It's coming up. It's coming up. Or he removes the suspension. We know some of you prefer non-suspension wheels. With Challenger, you can easily transform it to a non-suspension model by removing the suspension kits. So this is what it would look like with no suspension. It's like low rider status, dude. That's pretty wild. Check that out. So no suspension right here. I mean, dude, that's pretty, That's crazy that you can do this with a wheel like that. And you can see right there where they've removed the suspension. It really is taken out of it. And right there you can see the suspension in the wheel. So if you're a rider that is kind of up in the air as if you want a suspension or non-suspension wheel, with this one you really can't go wrong, it seems like. And also with the... Um, with the rim on this wheel, it's a reinforced rim, like the V12 high torque rim. Never had a problem with that rim, guys. I've literally rode it at 25 PSI since I got that wheel. I've tanked it into rocks. I've actually felt the rim, the tire bottom all the way out and hit rocks with the V12 high torque. And my rim is pristine. It's fine. So they really did a huge upgrade on that rim. And they said with this one, it can take twice the impact of the V12 high torque rim. I think it's like 2,700 kilograms of direct impact on the rim in like one spot, and it's going to be good to go. So that's awesome, guys. I think this is going to be a kick-ass electric unicycle. I like the fender on it. Fender's in a good spot. Dude, it rocks. Let's check out. Let's check out um, e-wheels real quick and see the price on this baby. They got, they got this... Um, Okay, word. They do have it up. So, <clears throat> in motion V13, you got a one thousand dollar deposit's open right now, guys. Um, if you want to put your deposit in, you can put it in below. Uh, if you click the eWheels link and use the link that's below my video, like I just didn't do. Um, but if you take the extra time and use that link, guys, it helps me out. It seriously does. It's a big help. Helps me travel. You know, pay for gas at these times. Go to cool places. I am in the middle of moving, so I'm going to be riding and all that stuff soon. It's kind of been a problem. I don't have internet at my new house, so I had to come back here, and I've just left my setup here at the old house, and I'm trying to travel back and forth. But um, anyways, guys, I'm going to keep getting the videos out. Uh, deposits are open for this thing. I'm probably going to put my deposit in, dude, because I don't know if I'm getting one to test, but I definitely want one. Um, shipping uh, from U.S. expected in late December guys so this is going to be about four months before these are going out so this is going to be an early pre-order price so, wait, all right it says early bird pre-order price three thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollar balance on arrival so you're putting that one thousand dollar holding deposit in right now and the special pricing is three thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars I guess it might go up guys so from what i'm seeing right here it might be going up in price this is an expensive electric unicycle i do notice that but it is going to be the fastest one ever made it's probably going to be the most well-built one ever made knowing in motion i know there's a justification for this price the in motion v12 you can get for 2500 bucks the v12 high torque which is a great electric unicycle I think if you want to get an in-motion wheel, you want to get something similar to this and not break the bank, and you want it now, I think the V12 high torque or high speed are great options. I would get the high torque. I've been having a blast with that wheel. But if you want something to satisfy you now, go ahead and get that. If you order it below, it also helps out as well. You don't have to get this one. So I'm not trying to make you spend $4,000. I'm just letting you know this thing's coming out, and it's going to be cool. So that's where I am with that. I know everybody's... You know, money's tight for everybody right now. And I'm not trying to sell you on a $4,000 wheel. You can get a lot of fun out of a $2,500 one, like the V12 high torque. Just letting you know.
So, all new generation controller on this with 42 MOSFETs. So, this is going to be crazy. What MOSFETs basically mean, guys, is those little uh, black squares on your motherboard that are the... They're, they hold your power, basically, in your wheel. From whenever you're, you're conducting your business on your electric unicycle, you're jumping, you're turning, whatever it is, it's holding that power for what you're doing at that time and what you're going to be doing at about 0.2 seconds ahead of that, okay? So those, that's what those MOSFETs are doing. And they're basically your points of, of failure on motherboards. In the past, that's what they were. So the 9Bot1E Plus was the first electric unicycle I had, uh, Basically, it was the first electric unicycle I started riding a lot. My first wheel was the Airwheel X3 back in 2014. Then I got the 9Bot1E Plus in 2015. And that wheel, guys, um, had, I think, six MOSFETs on it. And what would happen is when you tried to jump a curb or something, they weren't necessarily made for jumping back then. They were just made for slow commuting in an urban scene, kind of like the Segway was. But... I tried jumping it up curbs. I tried jumping it down curbs, and I kept blowing MOSFETs on it. And it only had six of them on the motherboard. And the reason you don't hear about MOSFETs being a problem on electric unicycles anymore is because they fixed this a long time ago, and they fixed it with, like, 12 MOSFETs where you didn't have a problem anymore. So now we have in motion coming in with 42. So you're never going to have a problem with this, guys. It's going to be just like the capacitors on this. All your energy is going to be spread out evenly over the electronics, over a lot of good electronics, a lot of good uh, MOSFETs, a lot of good capacitors. So this thing's going to work like a charm. Again, a justification for the expensive price. I know it's expensive. But it's going to have a 3,024-watt uh, battery pack on this with the Smart BMS. So this, get, guys, from InMotion, 3,000-watt uh, hours is basically... Um, Think of it, you'll be able to get basically twice the range of your InMotion V12s right now. InMotion V12s are about 1,700 watt hours. About three, this one's going to be about, about twice that. About. So if you can get like 40 miles out of your V12, expect 80 miles out of this one comfortably. It's going to have four suspension models, two per side, and fitted with XL, extra large spike pedals, which have this like, look at this like, the way they're made is almost like a like a, a good architectural like taper to them, where the outside spinner it kind of goes in, has a honeycomb structure to it, and they look solid. They look like they could really take a really big impact, and these pedals look like they're just made well. And I'm glad to see that because it is possible to jump high enough and break pedals. And I've done that before. I've jumped high enough on a jump. I knew it in midair it was going to be bad. I stayed on it. I didn't bail. I stayed on it, and when I landed. The pedal broke on one of my old Bigos. It just snapped clean off one side. And I'm glad I stayed on it, and it did dissipate the energy by it's the pedal snapping. Nothing in me snapped, which is good, honestly. But um, they've upgraded that now, so that, uh, that's not going to happen. Um, and it has suspension in it, so you know you should be able to jump this thing and comfortably land really hard. And the pedal's not going to break. We know the rim on it is very solid, and the rim's going to hold up very well. And we also know that it has a full suspension system in it. So you're good to jump this thing and land hard and not have any problems. So it's going to be great, guys. I don't know what that was playing. I thought somebody was coming outside or showing up. And the stock tire is going to be knobby. It's going to be a knobby. It's going to be a 22-inch wheel. I thought, think that's something we should talk about. This wheel is going to be bigger than the V13. It's going to be bigger than, or it's going to be bigger than the V12, I should say. So the V12 is a 16-inch electric unicycle. This one's going to be a 22-inch wheel, guys, which is big. So um, the Monster, which is like the biggest electric unicycle, pretty much the 24-inch wheel. That's it's 24 inches. The big Monster you see people riding it almost looks like they're riding on a a the front wheel of like a. a chopper like a like a west coast chopper it looks like the front wheel of that that people are just riding on that's the monster pro this wheel is going to be about two inches smaller than that one so 22 inches it's going to be up there dude it's going to be a big wheel and so again
for that price point, it's just going to be a big piece of kit you're getting, dude. It's, this thing's going to be sitting high up off the ground. It's going to be nice, very nice bearings in it, very nice roll cage. All the components are going to be top notch on this thing. And this is just going to be, um, I really think it's going to be the most well made electric unicycle ever. So, straight up, dudes. This is in motion V13. Deposits are open. Um, I think it's going to be a kick ass reel. Anyways, dudes, it's been Chooch. I'll see you dudes in the next one.